Hi, I'm Lisa Singer. I am the Senior Director of Event Programming at Media Post, and this is Brand Insider BTS, where I get to pull back the curtain on some of the most influential women marketers today. And with me is Barbara Carey, and she is the co-founder of it's a fish. What is it? A fish? Fishing lure, the banjo minnow. Banjo minnow. Okay. That is like a crazy name. <laughs> right? I mean, all right, where, where did it come from? What is it? Well, it's a fishing lure and it just happens to be a, a product that we were involved in the marketing of 20 years ago and it's kind of come full circle. And so uh, we acquired the rights a few years ago and launched it, but it is a fishing lure that was extremely popular 20, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a household name, um, but it's a fishing lure. So it's a, it's a plastic bait. I don't fish, but my husband's a big fisherman. Uh, <laughs> yes. So if I misspeak about the fish, I'm getting better, but you know, I'm not a fisherman, um, but it's really a fun business because um, people who love to fish are absolutely fanatical about it. And uh, it's just fun to kind of bring that fun and excitement to people. Well, I just think I, the banjo, like that, is it because if you want yeah, to so, play the banjo while you're fishing, it kind of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there is a way that one of the rigs for the banjo minnow has rubber bands to it. So that's when amazing. you rig it, it might look a little bit like a banjo. So I think that's how they came up with the name. Okay. Well, yeah, I, yeah I, we didn't exactly. name it. It was existing. Uh -huh. uh, there were uh, a couple of really great fishermen uh, that came up with the product all those years ago and um, fishermen everywhere have loved it. Well, because I, I mean, I know this is a new venture. You have just been launching that and getting it started. Um, prior to that, most all of your career or most of it has really been you a co-founder of Script to Screen again with your husband. And for, you know, for those who don't know, Script to Screen is responsible for most of the direct TV and infomercial commercials that you see on television. So um, I'm curious, did that inspire you? Like working with so many, you know, when you're talking direct to consumer, you know, products, they're sometimes, the people who are inventing it are the ones who I'm sure are there you're meeting. Did they inspire you to then sort of own and start, even though it was a, a brand that was already, or a product that was already made to launch your own company with it? Absolutely, because this is what we're doing for ourselves now is what we've done for clients for 36 years. So uh, we've always dabbled in it a little bit, but we've never really gone this far into um, owning a product. And it's just, it's second nature for us to market products like this. Mm -hmm. And we've done it in this particular case with this product all these years ago. So it's, it's really fun uh, to do for ourselves what we do for our clients and, uh, you know, we get to pull all the different levers of marketing uh, when you launch a product like this. So it's really good, too, from a business standpoint, because we're still learning. We're always learning. And so as we learn with this particular product, we can bring those learnings to our clients as well. So it's really good all around for us. It was. I mean, so you've seen products come, fail, do really well, all of the above. Um, so that must be a little sometimes too much knowledge can make things a little bit scarier or, you know, you know what can happen. Was any of that part there when you were launching? Absolutely. Absolutely. We know you can even have a very successful product and launch and still not make it work for any number of reasons. So you're right. We kind of know where, uh, where the pitfalls can be. So uh, it's good news, bad news, but I think it's good to go in with our eyes wide open uh, we thought a lot about it prior to uh, getting into this little venture. So uh, we feel really well prepared for it. Yeah, no, and it's, I have to say, I actually was in one of your uh, infomercials. <laughs> Years ago, right? A product with Suzanne Summers. Yeah, with the, what is it called? Face Master? Face Master. Face Master, yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm very good at just <laughs> using yeah. them whatever that's so yeah. funny but uh products that were great and i mean when you look at suzanne summers talk about a fantastic marketer she has done phenomenal and she just always seems to know what products are gonna really resonate with people yeah no that's i totally agree and and it, it i no i don't, I don't have the product to be honest but i did try it a little bit and it was pretty it felt nice yeah yeah so 
but anyway, just thought I would throw that in there. But mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you, so as we're talking about most all of your career, most of your career really was, you know, have launching your own company and, and doing these um, direct to consumer productions. Direct, I'm, so I'm, I'm saying D to C, I, I'm in marketing phase. What is it direct? What is it direct marketing or direct, direct marketing? marketing? Yes. Marketing. Well, it's understandable, right? Because our business has gone through so many name iterations, right? We started with infomercial, then it was brand commercial, then it was performance marketing. I mean, direct to consumer. So uh, right. there's a lot of different names for what we do. Yeah. So, but I, I am, I'm obviously direct to D to C, you know, on mm -hmm. the brain. Right. Um, well, but I'm, talk about when you were, you know, first starting out or even just graduating college or the coming towards the end of your college years, what were you, did you see this career? Like talk about your career path, like what you sort of saw for yourself and then how it evolved to where it is. Never saw this coming. <laughs> Uh, I think our backgrounds are a little similar because I started out out of college. I was a television and radio uh, major and I went on to get a master's in psychology and um, started out as a sports reporter in the LA market. So I produced and reported on the Rams and the Raiders and the Lakers and the Angels and the Dodgers. And so um, when I got there, there was really just one other woman and she was very well established at the time. Um, but I was covering sports teams and games and events um, for local radio, for ABC Wide World of Sports, and then for some local TV stations. Uh, so that was kind of the path I was headed on. And uh, I enjoyed it. It was great fun, but I kind of realized that I was never going to be that person that knew all the statistics about particular people and games and plays and all the things you really needed to immerse yourself in to be successful in that arena. And it also looked like I would probably have to go to another market um, really to get more on-air experience. And I really didn't wanna do that. And as all those things were kind of coming to fruition, we started seeing infomercials on television. And we thought, wow, those are really bad. If we could come up with our own product, we know how to produce TV shows. Yeah. We could do this for ourselves. So that's, that's how it started. And it, it, there was really no thought behind it. I, I often think, had we known what we were getting into, we may never have done it. But luckily, we really didn't know what we were getting into. Well, and that's an example of the opposite of what I you know, asked you at the top, because you knew all of things that could go wrong or could work, but it, it adds a little bit more pressure or tension or stress. Right. But you don't, sometimes ignorance is bliss. <laughs> I think so, especially when you're young, right? Just, yeah. just do it. Uh-huh. So, and now when you, so when you launched it, because anyone launching a business, you know, because whatever that business, whether it's fishing lore or, you know, mm -hmm. doing these, producing these, um, you know, infomercials, you still, it's one, it takes courage to do that, yes, but also how do you get it going? Like, how do you start getting, you know, people interested in drumming up business and then marketing yourself and just becoming the success you have become? Right, well, we started because we, again, thought if we could come up with our own product, we could do much better than the guys we were seeing on TV. And at the time, to us, it really looked kind of like snake oil salesman, right? It was very Carnival Barker, crazy selling techniques. So we did develop our own product. Um, we were able to put together a partnership and raise some money. And we came up with a product that was, um, like the category that was popular at the time was affirmations, relaxation, positive thinking. Mm -hmm. So we developed a whole program, hence my master's in psychology degree, um, to, to help consumers like it's it's yeah. totally right it works perfectly to absolutely meeting yeah. what you want but anyway yeah. sorry to interrupt yeah so we thought we'll develop our own product so we did everything right we created the product we um we got we fulfilled it in korea at the time and had it shipped over started our own fulfillment at the time i was doing media buying my husband was doing the product manufacturing and getting it over here. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny because I, there are still people in the media buying business today that I was calling on the phone all those years ago saying, hey, can we buy a spot on, you know? Yeah. So it's really fun. It's been a good business. Um, but we learned the hard way, right? We learned all the things that you need to know uh, to, to make a business like that work. I mean, the infrastructure for 
these TV commercials are is pretty significant. So we learned it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. And we had nothing but failure at the beginning because we tried to take a much more educational approach to our selling. That doesn't work. Um, you know, we thought these other guys were so bad. Well, they were much better than we were. Um, but that's where we kind of learned. <laughs> We had to learn that, you know, there's a fine line between selling and education. Mm -hmm. So that's how we learn the business. And then uh, people started seeing our commercials on TV and we got some calls saying, hey, can you do this for us? We want to do an infomercial. So that's really how it started. Wow. So when you, how did they know? Because you wouldn't, I wouldn't think when you see a, a product on TV that they know it's your product. So I wouldn't think that they produced it, but I guess it's different now when, when you were first starting out, that wasn't the case maybe. And so you were able to take advantage of that. Yeah. Well, we've always been able to put our name at the end of the show. So that was kind of an advertisement. So people didn't necessarily know that it was our product that we were marketing. Mm -hmm. They just thought, oh, here's a company doing this. Let's see if they can do it for us. So, so you made it we weren't anticipating that either. You know, really? we weren't thinking that that was going to happen. Well, I just love that you cre you created what you want. Like you basically said, okay, we want to do this. So how do we do it? Let's create our opportunity. So, all right, we, let's make a product. Let's yep. put it together. And yep. oh, dog yep. There <laughs> is a little miniature Molly. She's a miniature uh -huh. long-haired dapple dachshund. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to, see. you're going to have to pick her up by the end. Okay. Big voice, yeah. little dog. <laughs> That's great. Well, I, I like to do my snooping, as I always say, and I saw a quote from you that said, peaks and valleys are inevitable no matter how successful you are. So I want to ask you, what has been your most challenging peak? I mean, challenging valley. Wow. There have been, there've been a few, which I think is typical. If you're going to be in business for yourself, you kind of have to expect that. Um, I would say... Um, Boy, that's a landmine. <laughs> I would say um, we had some challenges um, internally with a particular employee and um, turned into a lawsuit. And, it, you know, it was just as kind of bad and ugly as it can be. And we never saw that coming. Um, it was very un unusual in a sense, the way that it all kind of went down. Um, but it's never fun to have to be in a lawsuit and pay attorneys and it's a, it's really stressful. So it's just something you have to, obviously you work through it and you get through it. Um, but it's hard. It's hard. There's some really hard aspects to business. Uh, yeah. Well, and I don't want you, I'm not asking you to go into specifics because obviously, I, I wouldn't, yeah. but, um, how did you get through it? You know, in, in the sense of not only on a personal level, but also, because as you said, it was stressful and I'm sure mm -hmm. with another employee is probably someone you trusted. So mm -hmm. dealing with all of that, but also then on the business side as a business owner. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I think the way we got through it is we knew it was something that had to be done and we had to let this particular person go. And um, it was just taking too, it was too much of a distraction for the business. So we had to make that change. So I think we got through it knowing that we had to do this. We didn't really have a choice. And uh, that brings me to another one of my favorite things that that's something my dad told me when we started our business is, are you sure you want to do this? Because you have to be prepared to make the really tough decisions. There are going to be some really challenging decisions you're going to have to make and you're going to have to make them. And that was definitely one of them. But we got through it just knowing that you know, people told us all along the way, this will come to an end, you will be through this and you'll carry on. And we knew we needed to do it for the sake of the business. And um, we just had to power through it. But it was tough, as anybody who's been in that situation knows. Oh, I'm sure. Well, let's go for a brighter side. What's the best, okay. the greatest peak in your Oh, I think there have been so many, really, the people that we've met along the way, the places that we've been able to travel and the things we've been able to do that we never would have done had it not been for this business. Um, I mean, I, for those who remember Robin Leach, I was at his home on a private island in Antigua um, filming a, a commercial with him and Lifestyles uh, of the Rich. Yeah, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, yes. 
And then uh, we, we went to Windsor Castle for uh, the Duchess Sarah Ferguson's 50th birthday party and cool. never would have been to Win Windsor Castle for a party, but we were working uh -huh. with her on a, launching a product at the time. Yeah. So those kind of things have really been fun, kind of bucket list kind of things. Mm -hmm. It sounds it. Well, and mm -hmm. I assume we can also add to that um, grandma. <laughs> yes. That's new and exciting. How is that? How, how old is she? She's right? six weeks. Yeah, she's six weeks old. It's our first grandchild. And uh, my daughter got lucky because she's a really good baby. Um, she's here now. Um, we've got four generations. So she's downstairs. We need to learn from the baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, my mom, uh, so Grace's great grandmother, is with her downstairs right now. Um, our daughter had to go to a function, so she'll be back shortly, but it's fun. I get to see her a lot and, uh, it's just, you know, a whole new world. And what's her, Grace, did you say her name? Grace. Uh -huh. Grace. And you have your village. Like, that's awesome that, you know, yeah. you're all there. Yeah. Well, yeah. congratulations. I'm really happy Thank for you. you. That's awesome. So, um, I want to ask you, this is a little bit, uh, I'm going to say it and it, I need a quick answer. You need to produce a 30 second direct TV video about yourself. Go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> oh, myself. Oh gosh. Uh, I'm really bad at this, Lisa. I have no <laughs> idea what that would be. You know what it would be? It would be me with my family. Yeah. It would be me with my daughter and the new baby and it would just be pretty boring us going about our, our lovely daily lives. Awesome. Yeah. See, yeah. you did it. Yeah, did it. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> if you had too much time to think about it, then you'd, you'd end up like making it confusing or whatever, but that's what it is. That's the, the heart of it, right? What you just right. said. So, yeah. But yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here's another one. You might, people react different. I've, I asked this question to others and I get either uh, like staring at me for like a minute or <laughs> an answer, but if you could unlearn one thing, what would it be? Oh, um, how, um, how do I say this? How, uh, unkind and how un, um, ethical people can be. Yeah. It's another thing you learn in business. That is true. And you yeah. just have to, like, as you said, you, Try to stay clear of it as best you can and, and keep moving forward. And, yeah. and talking about that, keeping in line with that, um, we are seeing brands today stepping up more for, you know, different causes. And, um, but you, it's this kind of a fine line. You don't want mm -hmm. to be that brand who's not authentic to what you're standing up for, but to stand up for what you believe in. How do you, like, do you think that Eve, there's even any responsibility for a brand to sort of speak for those who can't? Or is it just okay to just go on and, and you, maybe you don't have to get involved because we are seeing more brands getting involved. And again, I think they was kind of pushed to it by consumers, but do you think it's, it's appropriate that that was the push? You know, I think you always have to do the right thing, whatever that is, you have to do the right thing. So I don't think that you have to get involved in things because you feel you should be doing that, but I think you always have to do the right thing. So I think as long as you're doing the right thing, I, that that takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. And I do think the brands who, I mean, I think especially today with consumers, I mean, I'm talking with people all the time at the different um, summits that we have, and it's so much more since COVID consumer centric and consumers are expecting so much more from their brands. So yeah. I think you need to do the right thing, like you said, but also it makes business sense, you know, as long as you do it in a way that stands behind what you truly believe in and you, and you have to do it internally, you know. Absolutely. And you use the word authentic. I, there's nothing more important. You have to be authentic to who you are, who your brand is. Yep. You can't fake it these days. There's too many ways consumers can figure out uh, that is not real. They're going to find another tweet somewhere or a post <laughs> that says the exact opposite or it's just you can't like it amazes me when. I don't mean just celebrities as in entertainment, but just people who are known in the news, famous for whatever, and they say things or they write things, you know, post things, and they, it doesn't occur to them that it's ever gonna, you know, it's not like it's just, 
it's one thing if you want to say a comment to your friend, but to mm -hmm. actually put it out there and then be surprised that you're getting so much backlash, it just amazes me. Can we talk about something that's very timely on that topic? Yeah. I feel so bad for Tom Brady right now because I don't know if you saw what he did, but I guess he was on a podcast or he, he was talking somewhere about something and he was kind of making the um, inference that he looks at going back to training camp like you know men that go off to war oh it's time again you got to go and i i don't think that tom brady has anything but the ultimate respect for you know that part of our population that goes to war i, I know he does but he made a comment and he is really getting hammered for it so you're right you have to be so careful what you say in every instance I know you really have to watch yourself. I've been in so I just got back from a summit. I told uh, yeah. for a video summit, and I've been so when I'm at a summit, I really like news. I don't have <laughs> mm, everything right. going. On. So, um, but no, I would feel like I mean I'm Boston girl, so I love Tom Brady, and I actually even when he went to Tampa, I still against my mm. brother's wishes, but I still was a <laughs> Tom Brady fan. I just I like him. I'm not saying he's perfect, but right. uh, I I I really just, I think he seems like a good person and he did so much for the Patriots and for Boston. It's just right. Right. And for the most part, he's stayed out of the news in this long career that he's had, you know, so it is just tough. Yeah. Either yeah. that or better. He needs to get either some media training or, <laughs> or yeah. just don't go on the podcast. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So speaking of actually superheroes in a sense, um, if you were a superhero, which one would you be? Who are? What's your superpower? Oh gosh, I don't. I don't know that I have a superpower, but I'd like to fly. So anybody who can fly, that's my. That's my. That would be my guy. <laughs> is it because getting places, or is what? What makes you want to fly? I think so. Just let me get there. Let's take an easy route, no traffic, and be that. that maybe that comes from living in Southern California. <laughs> oh my gosh, that, that's true too. Especially yeah. when you're in. I mean, at least. Uh, you know, Newport Beach, Orange County, it's not as bad traffic wise, but right. I've been lived, I've lived in the past and right in LA and forget it. It's just, yeah. it's, it's a lot. Fun. So, okay, flying, that's good. Um, you could also just hover over people and maybe yeah. listen in. That would work too. <laughs> If you want to be Snoopy and like, you know, that would be probably what I would do since I'm always <laughs> looking at people and what they do. And so, all right, so tell me your guilty pleasure. Mm. I don't think it's that guilty, but I love binging historical fiction. You know, anything on Netflix or Prime or Masterpiece, um, I, I can watch that for a very long time. So you know, like The Crown, I right? I just heard The Crown's gonna drop season five coming up here. Yeah, but it's getting a lot of flack because of it's this, this season, it's going to be about the whole Diana and, um, you know, now King. Right, you know, right. And um, they're basically, you know, coming at a time when he just lost his mother and, he, and he's on a, right now, the people love him. And this is obviously a time when people weren't such a fan of his. Sure. So, um, yeah, so anyway, yeah, yeah. We'll I heard them, somebody on the news was talking today. They need to put a disclaimer up though. This is just for entertainment purposes. They're, it's not really that real, but then I've heard other people say there are a lot of um similarities to how things went in the day and and what they're showing on the crown yeah well, that you know. same, um D dench judy dench mm -hmm. she, she's who wrote a big um she wrote a big article a big op-ed saying she? that but i think she i don't know if it's her who was asking for that or but i don't know if the producers have come out and said whether they're going to do it or not but i guess mm. we'll have to see i'll i'll, yeah. I'll check it out and maybe i'll talk about it in the next <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So I'm talking about, and in, in, but as you obviously just launched a new product, just had a new grandbaby. Um, what are you, is there anything new, any new revelations that you've experienced that have been like whatever, on, on whatever side, business, personal, both, however you want to share? I think it's a revelation that's been coming for a while, but there are so many things you have to know and be able to do in this world with technology the way it is. And there's so many different places where you need, if you're going to market something, you got to be in a lot of different places and you have to do it well. Um, I feel like there's a lot of full-time jobs for an individual now. It's 
you've got your job, but you've got to know all these other things as well to be yeah. effective. So I don't know how much more of this we can take, right? I mean, how many more things can we do? How many more plates can we spin? Yeah. Um, probably for the younger generation, they can spin more because they're used to it. You know, they, they've grown up with it. It's not new to them, but wow, we have to pull a lot of levers. Yeah, well, it's just even I look at my um, one of my best friend's daughters and she's, you know, on texting. And it's just like, like she'll be like, and she'll ask, like, we'll, we'll be out and she, we want to look up something. I'm like, all right, you want? She's like, let me do it. I can do it faster. Right. Yeah. <laughs> still yeah. like, you know, because it's like it, she grew up with that kind of technology, well, whether it be they do. on the phone or, you know, or, you know, mm -hmm. computers or iPads or whatever you want to call it. Um, yes. it's just and to be proficient, way. you know, just like us getting on a Zoom call today, I, you know, is it Zoom? Is it Teams? Is it, uh, who knows, Skype? I, there's so much technology we have to know. Yep. Well, and crazy. You, gotta, you have to evolve if you want it, unless you yeah. want to just stop playing, you yeah. know, it's real, so it comes down to it. You can, yeah. you can sit there and say, nope, I'm going to keep the feet in the sand and then it's just going to go right by you. So, right. Right. You know, that this is another reason we just like as you said earlier you just have no choice and you move forward and get to where you're going to yeah. get to yeah so, well i want to know if okay if you you this is you know it's been so much part of your whole life especially since you co-founded with your husband but if you weren't that if you would never launched script to screen never mm -hmm. launched your lore um your banjo um what would you be? Interior designer. Really? See how quickly that question came? That did. So that's been something you thought of. Yeah. Well, that was my, in the, I grew up wanting to be an interior designer because my father was in the home building industry in Southern California, which was booming when I was a, a child. So I walked a lot of model homes. I knew the interior designers. I love that. Um, I love that business. And I really love it today. It's come so far. Um, so I have fun around the house. Well, you have a beautiful house. Do you dabble in it? Maybe, I mean, obviously I'm sure you take, you know, you use your skills with your home, but mm -hmm. have you ever, you know, sometimes people help other friends or do people go to you and ask you? No, for advice? I'm not that good. You know, I'm really bad with scale and sizing of things. And sometimes my color can be off just enough that it's not good. So <laughs> I don't try to help other people. <laughs> trial and error on myself as a friend enough. right you want to make sure you don't lose them that's right so what would you all right what do you your grace is you know just starting out now mm -hmm. as she's getting older you know this is i love that younger women are watching these and learning from them that are just starting their careers or even women who are older and changing over their careers but we definitely get comments from people like that and learning from things that you guys are saying mm -hmm. um what would you say to Grace, like as she's in the mode of starting her, and it may not even be, because I think, you know, you say things in high school, but then in college, like when, what's, what's the advice in say high school? And then what's the advice as you're venturing into the work world? Stay open to the possibilities. Have a plan, but be open to that plan changing. You know, see what the world puts in front of you and embrace it. And it sounds like what every marketer is having to do today, pivot. Yes. <laughs> well, yes. You know, we use that as a joke. We'll be like, we'll call it our drinking game. Every time someone says pivot, you, you know, you take a drink because that's really what's happening. But it really is something that you, because I, what I love about so many um, successful women like yourself is you hear their stories, you hear the challenges that you hear how they had these failures or fell, but they get up and they keep moving and they, or they changed their route, you know, or they're open to other opportunities, which brought them to these amazing things, as opposed to if they stayed in that. So I do, that is, I think it's the perfect advice because it really mm -hmm. is, you can't know what the, what's going to come, you know, like you, although, and then I did speak with one, she actually, it's actually running now um, with um, FTD, the woman, and, but she's very much a planner, but I know she, she would adapt and she would pivot but she mm -hmm. was able to set A to B, like she was that kind of person. I thought that was really interesting because yeah. that's what got her to, you know, CMO at position mm -hmm. and, and at a younger age than she expected. And yeah, so you just, 
you you need just to make those going. plans, but just be open to yeah and if, keep going. Yes, yeah, and keep, keep going. going. Yes, definitely. Well, Barbara, thank you so much. This was awesome. I really enjoyed it. And I, well, are we, is Molly still there? Can we see her? Or? You know what? I think she's sleeping now. You want me to go grab her? She is really cute. If, you, if, she, if she's right next to you, yeah, let's see her. Let me see. All right. We're going to wake her up. <laughs> There's a dog in the room. I got to see it. I know. Oh, look at her. That's Molly. Molly. <laughs> <laughs> she is a miniature so she's like nine pounds uh, and she's a long she's a long-haired dachshund she's precious she's beautiful how she's old very sweet she's two and a half years oh so a baby still yes and this one has not left the baby's side really I mean, she is protective the baby has 24 7 security <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, Molly, it is very nice to meet you. And Barbara, <laughs> it was very nice talking with you. And thank you for watching. And as I always say, if you have a woman marketer who you want me to pull back the curtain, you want to hear more about, please let me know and I will do my best to get her. So thank you. And thanks again, Barbara and Molly. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs>